talking to a band tonight that actually was playing the event, the Vegetable Men. Of course, there's some distribute whether it should be Vegetable Man or Vegetable Men. There are many men. There are some from what? Vegetables. What vegetable are, are you, sir? Spring Chive. Absolutely. What's your name? Arugula. Yes. Asparagus. And you? Rutabaga. Right, right. Very good vegetables and all very good for you as well. I I'm sorry, but what, what, how many years have you been doing this for the, uh, the Sid Barrett birthday party? Actually, this is our third year of doing it. This is the fourth year of the Sid Barrett tribute show and it's our second year with Reed and I actually I met Dave Gutierrez because I was selling some or he was buying vinyl and I went over and we started talking about music and he said oh yeah I do this Sid Barrett thing and I was like oh my god can I play please uh, Mr. Rutabaga how did you actually get involved in getting to like Sid Barrett type music I think like many people uh, it, you know everybody turned on to the Floyd around 73 75 with Dark Side of the Moon and Wish You Were Here but then I started hearing rumblings about the guy that started the band so I started looking back into their catalog with Echoes and then Adam Hart Mother and then Amagama and then all the way back to the first album and then it was like wow this music's so out there and at first people either love it or hate it and I, I didn't know what to make of it at first and then I fell mad in love with it like everybody else huh? I always remember uh, Ke Kevin and I met right around the time the Dark Side came out, 74, 75. And uh, is it true that, that your brother Terry saw them at the Niagara, at the uh, Peace Bridge Exhibition Center? Yeah, early on, early on. Actually, the, the early Floyd with Sid Barrett came to the you know, came to Buffalo at the Peace Bridge Exhibition yeah, Center. Bridge? He did really? Yes. Oh my God, that's crazy. Is this the first time you met this guy? This is Carrot. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm Spring Chive. Spring Chive. Spring Chive. I, I knew that. I knew that. I'm a bitch. I'm sure. I knew. I knew that. Spring Chive. I'm sorry. 1967 at the Peace Bridge Exhibition Center, your brother Terry saw them. And I always remember that was the first time that you were you would you had a realization like yeah I talked to my brother Terry that's where you got some of the albums from because he had them. he had all the, all the old Floyd stuff. They were talking so. about the uh, the uh, signature bridge back at that time too, and, and it still hasn't changed. I Actually, what is your most bizarre Sid Barrett story that you've ever heard? Well, there's the Mandrax story that everybody's heard. Mandy's, as they call them in England, they're like the English version of Quaaludes. I guess sometime, sometime in the fall of 67, when the Floyd were doing their first U.S. tour, they were out in California somewhere, and I guess he you know, had the curly, obligatory Hendrix perm, and I guess... Before he went out on stage, he crushed up all these Mandrax tablets into his hair with Brill Cream and went out on stage, and I guess the heat of the lights, it started melting, and I guess it, it was some ghastly visage of, of a melting face or something. What if they can't put up on melting pills and stuff like that on stage? What the hell's wrong with them, anyway?
interesting thing about Barrett was is he hit his creative peak in the er early part of 67 and by the fall he was gone and I think what what happened is and I've done a lot of reading on this I think he was just uh, a guy who was pretty brilliant who had a predisposition for schizophrenia which is exacerbated by a lot of LSD usage and uh, at first it was pretty interesting because it was a catalyst for a lot of creativity but it, it pretty much went south yeah, by the time summer hit and by the fall he was becoming a major league casualty so I mean, you think about it. I mean, he was writing his best songs in January, February of 67, and by January of 68, he was out of the band. Well, so. at, the, at the end, wasn't he, there were moments where he would just stand in front of the mic and yeah, not do it. He wouldn't even make a, a sound for 10 minutes, and the band just, they couldn't deal with it anymore, so. I mean, you might as well just have a coat rack on stage. Hey.